So uh, good evening, everyone. Um, hope you're all keeping well. Um, you're all very welcome to Wicklow GA under seven and nine tourist pair of highway webinar. Uh, just to introduce myself. My name is Darren Hayden. I'm a Wicklow GDA, um, and I'll be joined tonight by my colleague Garrett Doyle, who will be taking the lead up uh, in tonight's webinar. Uh, just a few things to make you aware of before we start. So tonight's webinar will be recorded and will be shared with everyone on the call. And it will also be shared on Wicklow GA Coaching and Games YouTube page. Um, we ask that everyone turns off their cameras and mutes their mics as uh, this will help with the overall quality of the presentation. So, Garrett, if you're ready to go there. Yeah, thanks, Darren. <clears throat> OK, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the tourist webinar for under seven, under nine coaches. So uh, Taurus is a coach development program created by Leinster GAA and uh, it's essentially designed to support coaches in their journey as they um, coach and improve and develop players within their clubs. So the objectives of the webinar tonight, so at the end of this coaches will be able to explain the Taurus principles, understand the total playing performance model, and show the total playing performance coaching model in practice. <clears throat> so the tourist principles focus on how to coach and what to coach. <clears throat> so essentially they're, they're coaching rules, principles you abide by or govern your behavior as a coach. Tourist is the Irish for journey and um, there's an acronym designed around the word to uh, help you shape your sessions. So <clears throat> your sessions with your club and with your players, with your teams, should aim to test the player. So choose, adapt activities that challenge each player, upskill the player. So <clears throat> that'll be a primary focus that you're trying to uh, improve the player's skill. So <clears throat> you only know that if you understand each player's ability and try to improve upon that. Sessions should relate to the game, so make them relevant to the game, to the match they play at the weekends. You should always aim to be inclusive, so try and include all the players as often as possible. And then should stimulate, so should be enjoyable, but also developmental. So five principles that <clears throat> if you apply to your sessions, to your activities, will have you and the players moving in the right direction. So just a small task here, just think to yourself. What does a good coach coach? So what is it that they need to coach in the players to improve them? Um, and is it more than one thing? Is it a list of things? So you can be coaching the wrong thing or the right thing. So what does a good coach coach? So some answers we receive when we do this task are you can coach the skills of the game. You can coach players to work as a team. You can coach decision making within players. You can coach leadership amongst players, discipline. You can coach attacking play, defensive play, movement, speed, fitness. You can coach communication between players, coach support runs. And I'm sure there's, there's loads more. That's just a sample. But uh, I'd be surprised if, if people didn't feel that those are things you could coach in a player. Task two, again, just I'll take, give you a few seconds to think. You know what to coach. How does a good coach coach? So <clears throat> you've researched, you know what you should be doing with the players. Now can you make a uh, benefit of that and coach it correctly? So again, how does a good coach coach? So you could know what to coach, but you could be doing it incorrectly. So here's some possible answers or answers we get back. So plan what to do and when to do it. 
plan what to say and when to say it. Generate feedback, encourage, <clears throat> try to promote enthusiasm and enjoyment. Balance your activities of drills and games. Try to develop the person or learn about the person and help the person their self-esteem, their confidence, their inclusion in the group. Be aware that there's going to be mixed abilities, so how are we catering for that? Try to inspire, organise, motivate. So the Taurus and in extension, the total playing performance model, which we're going to come to now in a couple of minutes, combine the how and the what to try and help coaches um, improve their players and be effective in their in their coaching sessions. So the how and the what combine to make the total playing performance culture model. And essentially, this is this is a culture model designed in Crow Park a good few years ago. And it's also known as the three T's and the three P's. So there's six areas and they break the coaching into these areas. So there's the technical side of the player, the tactical side of the player, the team side of the player, the physical side of the player, the participant feedback, their ability to communicate back and forth amongst players, amongst each other, but also with the coach, and then their psychological focus. So <clears throat> all really it does is uh, reorganize the previous two slides of the how to coach and the what to coach into a, maybe a more um, easily read uh, structure. So it's just here in a table and we just fit in some of the answers from the previous two slides. So technical proficiency is a what, team play is a what, tactical awareness is a what, physical fitness is a what. Participant feedback is now merging over to the how, more the coach part of it, and the psychological focus also the how. The coach influences all of this, but really must pay attention to the feedback and the focus side of the model. So just to go into it, sorry, so this is how it's displayed on the Taurus player pathway coaching card. So that's obviously a blank card, but it's 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 displayed as a wheel because it's a continuous cycle. And he, there's four quad quadrants there for the technical, the tactical, the physical and the team play. That's just on the edge of the green areas. And they sit in centers to focus maintain the player's focus, their, their state of mind, then it sits. What, what brings it all together is the participant feedback. So the interaction, the instruction from the coach. So the total playing performance model, just in a bit more detail. So the technical, the skills of the game, with the ball, without the ball. So punt kick, near hand tackle, crouch lift, plus a lot more. <clears throat> The tactical prowess, simplify, this is basically decision making. You know the skills of the game, but do you use the skills at the right time? Do you do you choose the correct skill? And this this applies, I know this is under sevens and under nines, but you can see this and shape this and coach this at this level. So it could be as simple as, do they shoot when they're being tackled or do they pass to the player that's free? Do they run into space or do they run into a crowd? Do they... Do they tackle with the correct hand or do they push? Do they um, pass when they actually should run with the ball and stuff like this? So you can, you can, you have the skills, you know they can perform the skill. Now you've got to put them into uh, situations where they have to make a decision to choose the correct skill. So similarly, you, we can coach to, to, for them to work or play as part of a team. So can they can they do things and act and contribute to the team? So again, this it's I don't think it's too uh, out of bounds to like encourage and coach to call for the ball, to provide support runs when someone has the ball, to encourage when they're made a mistake under pressure, um, <clears throat> um, giving away the ball, things like that. Can they assist team teammates in the tackle? So all acting as a team, playing as a team. 
the physical, particularly at this age, is more the fundamental movement skills of the player. So teaching them how to run, how to run better, teaching them how to jump, how to jump higher, longer, faster, um, plus all the other ones you would have seen in the nursery. Uh, it goes into further detail in the um, on the card. So the participant feedback. So this is kind of merging now the the interaction instruction from the coach with the player. So the level of communication with the type. So this applies to all players of whatever age. What you will have to pay attention to here is the, your how simple the language it is you use, how um, simple the question is, um, how often the the communication is. Probably can't be too often, but um, it's essentially just getting that getting that process started. That coach sets the player a challenge, the player tries to perform, the, the player receives feedback based on their performance to improve, to do it better, to praise when they've done it correctly, and then coach resets and uh, offers another challenge. So that's the kind of cycle. So an example here is when they're performing a the scale, you could just ask them, where should your head be? Where should your hands be? Where should your feet be? You would have demonstrated these three things. You're trying to see, do they pay attention? Can they recall it? Where are they listening? Do they understand exactly? Asking this type of question will allow you um, <coughs> see, are they are they following it? Are they getting it? Do they understand the key teaching points of the skill? And then the last part of the total playing performance model is, so the psychological focus. So it's similar to the participant feedback, but you're really paying attention to the player's state of mind. The most obvious, two most obvious things is, uh, do they look happy? Are they smiling? What's their body language like? Um, if that's not correct, it's going to be difficult for them to feel included, um, feel uh, to be able to learn, to be able to improve. So you want them to be feel included, to feel happy. So they focus on the here and the now. They get engaged in the session. They feel valued, included. In turn, they feel challenged and they will be applying their energy towards um, improving and uh, meeting the challenges you're setting them in the uh, session. So that's the card. I've shown you the blank card. So that's the card for the age group which we'll be forwarding on to you all after this uh, webinar. Um, so as you see, the four quadrants in the middle, that's the green, uh, technical, tactical, team play and physical. In the dead center is the psychological focus, so the player's state of mind, and it sits on the feedback, so the interaction between the coach and the player. Along the edges are just some tips that you as a coach can uh, recall on about how to set up the environment, about um, maybe, uh, habits or aspects of the player at that age and then the game that's appropriate to them. So now we're just going to move on to um, a number of videos. Hopefully now they, they stream quite well. I think Darren has them in the chat box uh, links that if, if they're not playing uh, as uh, flowing straight forward, you can click into the link, but uh, they were working well for us earlier. And essentially this part here is just to show the total playing performance model in action and how it applies to all activities. It applies to some activities more than others, but um, you can you can see uh, the, those six areas, tac uh, technical, tactical, team, physical, participant feedback and focus. Um, in operation in these, each video is about a minute long. So it's a ball between two, they line up like so. You demonstrated the um, hand pass or the fist pass. Then just ask the players to perform the skill over and over again.
So fairly basic activity. We've all probably used it. So we just want to see, can we maximize everything that's in that? So technical, so it's a stationary hand pass. Straightforward enough. What decisions do the players have to make? Not many, but they can, the strength of the pass could be one or maybe the only one. Is there any team play aspect of it? Again, it's limited, but you could we could encourage the receiver to provide a target by putting their hands up. They only pass when the target's there. Um, physical fitness, there's not much movement, but they're developing the striking skills that are going to be needed for Gaelic games and also the catching skills. Participant feedback, what what does this activity allow you to, to coach or improve in the player? Really, it's the... Um, just reinforcing the key teaching points, which you would have explained in, in your demonstration. And how do you get a bit more focus into this? This is where you just a simple instruction of, they get to practice for a set period of time, then you might give them a challenge, which group can get the most in a minute? Something like that just gets them. It One simple, subtle instruction can just change the, the, the energy and that, that activity. So we just moved it on slightly. These All of these activities slightly uh, progress in difficulty or challenges the players may face. <clears throat> so the player in the middle um, experiences the challenge of this or is asked to do a little bit more. So here we're just introducing a small bit of movement. So How do we see it in operation here? So again, it's hand pass, but it's for the person in the middle. We're now encouraging that the when they receive the ball in the middle, they move. They move to the ball and they move while they're passing it. Just only three or four steps either side. Decision making involved to how strong to 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 strike the pass, but also the timing, not to get too close to the player. Um, when you're on the outside, obviously don't pass until they're looking facing you till they're ready and um, the team play aspect of it calling for the ball this is where we encourage the player in the middle to call the players on the outside to call and um, as we saw near the end of that video the players were swapping positions or side by side so the player in the middle needs to know which one they should be passing to so the players on the outside are asked to keep alternating and calling physical fitness Again, we just see a small amount of movement as well as the striking and catching skills we mentioned previously. Um, participant feedback, you can, we can uh, assist here in the timing of the pass, but again, we're mainly reinforcing the key teaching points of the skill and paying attention, does the movement affect the key teaching points? Do they then uh, stop striking the ball properly or transferring it from their left hand to the right hand? or? whatever, they just pay attention that the movement doesn't uh, negatively affect the technique. And then again, psychological focus, subtle instructions can just change this. So set a time, how many passes, set a challenge of no drops, race the line versus the line. So there could be a number of lines and let's see who can get the most amount of passes uh, first. So here's another hand pass or fist pass um, activity. So as you see here, it's similar to the previous one, a bit bigger, a bit longer. But the middle player now acts more of a wall and it's the outside players who are challenged. A 
this is where it's key now that the coach is aware of what this activity is meant to do. And sorry, one second. Apologies for that. Hit the wrong button. So on the move. So yeah, really pay attention. So this this is to it's a moving pass. The player with the ball should be moving. Now the person in the middle is stationary. But we really want to encourage the players on either side when they get the ball, they move. They don't stop the hand pass to the player in the middle. They keep moving. Again, here the decision making is when to pass. So um, don't get too close, but don't to be too far away. When they become comfortable at a certain distance, ask them to pass a bit sooner, a bit earlier. Team play again, there's more need for calling, more need for eye contact, more need for the hands to be up as a target. Physical fitness is developed a bit further here, so we can start to, we increase the stamina because the distance is a bit further. Um, speed, because you want to encourage them to, to do this a bit faster, similar to a match. And then, Reaction is just going to automatically come into this because every pass is not going to be perfect, which is a good thing. So they're going to have to, while moving, react to catch, but also then set themselves to pass. So very simple, but this is what we're, um, <clears throat> we are looking and focusing on. The feedback. So we try to relate this. Why is passing on the move important? Well, they're not, they're more than likely, they're not going to be standing still in their goal games. They're going to be having to pass while they're moving. So they need to practice this in training to become to become better at it, to become comfortable at it. Um, that's one way of getting in the importance of the move uh, in this activity. And then psychological focus. So again, we relate this to the match. So this is this is um, like a give and go in a match, a one-two. You're going through, you want to pop it to someone, they pop it back to you and then you're in and go. Or, and then also this will probably be set up as a number of lines doing this. Again, we can just encourage after a few minutes of doing this at a certain pace and uh, introduce a race. So again, around the square, and this is actually a good example here of really how the coach and I has to be um, has to be on point. So set up as a square and it's to encourage again passing on the move but it should be the player passing and also the receiver passing and just look at it, look at this activity see actually are all the passes on the move to someone on the move So I'd argue a lot of them were actually stationary, so very similar to the, to the very first activity. So you could have set that up, chosen to do that, and saying, well, that's, that's going to get me passing on the move to receivers on the move, as they will be need to do it in a match. But if the players aren't corrected or encouraged to know, you need to run for the pass and you need to pass to that runner. We're not passing to the cone, we're passing to the player running off the cone. So this is where the judgment comes in of, again, so it's passing the move to a moving target. This is where we really got to think about the strength of the pass, but also how far out in front of the runner. This is where team play comes in even further, timing the run off the cone, calling for it, encouragement when there's mistakes. Physical fitness, again, it's just a, a continuation of the previous one. So we can introduce speed here. We're going to be going for a bit of time. So it's going to be stamina. Again, more reactions to low balls, high balls, drop balls. OK, participant feedback. So we praise the movement. We nearly encourage the movement over the drop passes. So here we want to get their habit is when the ball's in play, we move with the ball and we move to get the ball. And we don't pass the stationary targets on our team we move and we're, we're comfortable moving um, and then uh, one way of 
getting the focus in is we're going to train fast and play fast. And this is a challenge. This is difficult. We've moved on from the simple stationary activities. We are doing more movements, quicker, faster uh, activities. So this is similar, only a different pattern or route. So again, there's timing and waiting. And again, similar to the last one, we're looking to pass in front of the runner. OK, so. Again, passing the move to a moving receiver, so that's what we want to encourage. We need to get that across to the players for this activity. We don't want it back to standing still passing to someone who's standing still receiving. Again, decision making, when to pass, when to start your run, uh, team play, call, signal, provide a target for the passer. Again, speeds, stamina, reactions. Again, we can come back as why is it important to move for the passer. So <clears throat> you're going to be marked in a match. You're going to have a defender. Uh, if you're not moving, the defender will probably get their hand in, get the ball off you. Um, if you're not moving, you might not get a pass. The, the player on the ball might go, well, you're stationary, you're marked, you're not in space. I need to find someone else to pass to. So it's very important. This is an activity we can link to the match to get movement and to encourage it. Uh, the focus element of it is, again, set a target, no drops. Can we get it up and down the line without dropping? Can you remember the route where you're meant to go? And a bit of pressure that you're linking the chain. If you drop it, is the everything goes out of sync. So we probably have to start again. So this is where we add in a slight bit of pressure. So let's see how many times you can get up and down without dropping. So here's another. <clears throat> Um, hand pass or fist pass activity and we're adding more again like we have in the previous uh, activities. So as you see it's grid, you can make it smaller or bigger and it's uneven teams so Team with the ball is four, team without the ball is two. So again, as you see, there's very few stationary passes, there's a few stationary receiving, but more than likely they're moving or should be moving. Again, you're always reinforcing the key teaching points and you're trying to look, does, this, does the opponents, the opposition uh, affect their um, affect their technique but we see it again technical so it's still the hand pass obviously just catching there but we're in this webinar and in this this training session let's say we're we're developing the hand pass and the fist pass so we're looking for a moving pass or a passer that's moving to a moving receiver but there's opposition now it's it's uneven opposition but there's still there's opposition uh, opposition so here now there's a bit of decision making you still take your four steps and if, if, if you want, you could add a play. There could be a bouncer solo. So now the player has the decision of when to pass or when to keep, and also an option of who to pass to. So are they passing to the player that's marked or the player that's free? Because with the 4v2, there should always be a player free. Um, <clears throat> and then the team play comes in even more here. It allows you to, to develop it, to coach it, to become a part of the habit of the team and to each player. So. We need to call, we need to support, we need to appreciate where the space is in the grid and move into that. So it's not too dissimilar to um, Piggy in the Middle, which kids play without any coaches' uh, involvement. So all we're doing here is putting a bit of a boundary on it and asking them to do that over and over again, but using the, the skill of the hand pass. Physical fitness, again, as well as the basic or the fundamental movement skills, we have... Um, Stamina, strength, agility, 
because there's going to be um, strength because they're probably going to have to break through tackles or withhold tackles, agility because they're going to have to move left and right, speed up, slow down, um, maintain their balance. And then uh, avenue to come in here with some feedback is why should we use the space? Answer being if there's two of them and there's four of us, if we spread out, they can only cover uh, so much space. How do we use the space? Well, Troy stay on the edges and as the ball move, we move. And when the defender comes into space, we move out of it. Try not to um, have two or three players in the same area. So one over, one left, one right, one far, one near, one behind, one in front, whatever it may be. So that's that's our line of questioning here to see that they appreciate in a game, in a, in a contest kind of activity, can they... Um, Combine the skill that they have with good decisions to to maintain the ball or keep the ball. And then psychological folks, you kind of link this. Well, these situations are forever happening in a match. A player slips, a player does a sidestep, a player uh, gets um, loses concentration, gets uh, out sprinted. It creates overlaps. And what we're trying to do is just take advantage of them. So that's our in here with psychological focus that we're going to be seeing this over and over again when we play the go games throughout the year. So this is a slightly different type of activity, but it's still working the hand pass and still the TPP applies to it. So it's like a game of tag or dodgeball. Two players with the ball. Other players are um, orange bibs are without the ball. Now they can also continue or carry a ball, which means they're, they can practice a bouncing a solo, but the greens are trying to hand pass against moving targets. So that kind of comes back around to what we've mentioned earlier. So as particularly we skip down to the bottom, psychological focus. So how do I know that was enjoyable? Well, it was the most obvious one where you could see smiles on the face and positive body language. So it's practice through a fun game. So these types of activities are also very beneficial to developing and improving our players. Um, so they don't necessarily realize how hard they're working and um, how difficult the task kind of is, is to hit someone trying to avoid the ball with a hand pass. Yes, as you see there, they were quite good at it. Um, so it's passing on the move at a moving target. Tactile prowess, well, if they're moving at this speed in this direction, I need to strike it this hard. So again, there's a bit of decision making, or maybe I won't try hit that guy, that's too difficult. I'll turn back around and go for someone else. It's team play. So small bit of team play you can encourage here is the chasers, the two guys in the middle with the ball as working as a team. So those two two trying to pin someone into the corner can uh, is a good uh, evidence of teamwork and make it easier for them to, to knock people out. Again, physical fitness, all types of movement, reaction, speed, and then a way to provide some feedback in an activity like this of uh, how do how do they perform it well? Uh, simple question is how do you find runners? How do you know where they are? This this means we need to move with our head up. We need to be able to scan, move left and right, be able to perform the skill without our focus on the on the ball entirely. We need to be able to kind of get to the level where uh, we can do it without looking. So we can look at the target. So as you will need or want the players to do in a match. So. It's more of that's a kind of a fun game activity. And as you see, we're kind of moving away from the drills to more games or games based. So here's an activity called Captain Ball. Again, it's two teams. And it just adds squares around the large square. So as you see there, or kind of a yellow goal 
green in the yellow goal there, an orange in the yellow goal at the top, a green in the yellow goal on the left, and an orange in the yellow goal in front of us. So oranges try to work it to one of their players in the box. And they pass it, to, that goalkeeper gives it back to the other team. So now orange passes to green and green tries to get it to one of their goalies. Oh, apologies. So. So again, passing and a move, moving receiver, but equal opposition. So it's 4v4 in the square. Again, tactical prowess, where, when and who. So team play. So support the ball carrier. Try to find space. Also, encourage or direct the player to the goal that's free, where there's very little opponents, uh, or very few opponents, I should say. Physical fitness, again, speed, stamina, strength, reaction. So, participants, so we've, we've shown or worked in the last activity how to use an overlap or develop an overlap, or sorry, two, two activities ago. Now we want to try, encourage, see, can they find it in a game like this? Where is our player where, where where in the this grid do we have an extra player and can we use that extra player to get to the to get to the goalie so again head up and scan similar to the last uh, dodgeball game and then psychological focus so again it's this is enjoyable this is challenging and it's practice through a conditioned game and this is we've come through i think about eight activities this is the ninth and now we get a bit closer to what it's going to look like on a go games, we have the condition here that it's it's hand pass only or for the for the most part. But this is probably be good, the hardest, most challenging because it's equal numbers, one goal for us, one goal for them. And then you choose which rules you apply or not apply or which skills are allowed or not allowed. The only thing missing in here is the, are, are the goalkeepers. So again, technical there, you can see it's it's hand passing on the move to moving receivers, equal opposition though. So it's going to be the hardest one to probably perform. Again, you've got decisions underneath the tactical prowess uh, area. So where to pass to, where to move to, when to pass, when to move, who to pass to, um, what direction to go, where is the space. Team play here is so we all have to attack as a team, we all defend as a team. We're trying to score up there and we're trying to defend down here. Physical fitness is, again, kind of combines everything that's out there, speed, stamina, strength with the tackles, up and down the pitch, slow, fast, accelerate, decelerate. Participant feedback. So here's a great, so these are the type of activities where you can stop a, a situation, freeze it, and try to fix it, or repeat a situation. So someone had the ball, they passed to their left to a player that was marked, where on the right there was a player that was free. So try replicate that, the, that that scenario or bring them back into that situation and kind of paint them the picture or what helps the ball carrier here. So um, calling for the ball, coming behind, coming left, coming right, um, talking to them, encouraging them. Again, the focus here is, as you are probably experiencing all the time, uh, they're asking for these type of activities, so they look forward to it, they enjoy it. It's challenging and it's it's so obviously relevant to the game they're going to be playing in, in Go Games. So just to recap again, so technical proficiency, some the key thing there is provide them with opportunities to perfect the techniques of all the skills. OK, tactical prowess. So building on their ability to perform the skill, Put them in opportunities or give them opportunities to make decisions to use that skill 
uh, in the right way at the right time. Team play, so we're trying to create uh, collaboration in teams of two, three, four, five. Physical fitness, so activities that give them opportunities to move in a variety of ways at various speeds. Participant feedback, activities that promote decisions from players. And this is crucial because then this allows you to actually coach, to generate feedback, to ask them questions, to, to find out for yourself, are they getting it? Are they learning? Do they understand or is it, have, I, have you not explained it correctly um, or do you need to do it a bit differently? And then psychological focus. So all the time we're trying to motivate them, inspire them. And the best way of doing this is setting appropriate challenges and putting them activities that not too easy, not too difficult. So we're not going to go into this video here now, but um, when you get the presentation and the links that we'll send out, this is a link of where we got all those videos and also um, so you see descriptions of them, uh, videos, diagrams and also allow you to create your own sessions and session planner, monthly or yearly session planner. We'll also be sharing with you so we've a uh, we have our own designed Wicklow player pathway sessions um, it's a number of sessions over a number of weeks. And it tries to incorporate and include uh, activities that allow you to um, maximize the total play and performance model. So we're coming to the end here now. So after attending or viewing this webinar, so the next step of this tourist um, coach support program here are the GDA visits. So obviously we don't know when they can actually start. But when we do, the process will be uh, yourself, the club coach or a club contact will contact ourselves, the GDAs and the GPOs, to arrange the visits. We'll set down dates before those visits um, start. The relevant GDA or GPO will have a conversation with that coach and that management team about what they want to achieve in these two sessions. And it'll be a collaboration. So it'll be the ourselves assisting the coach or the coaches in trying to develop something they um, they want to develop and it will allow coaches the benefit of it is it'll allow coaches to get feedback on things they do really really well and also areas and more so how they can um, uh, improve in areas they'd like to improve on or need to improve on um, so it's it affords the coach an opportunity to just get some feedback from someone from the outside. So um, yes, yeah, so this is the end of the objectives uh, or of the webinar. And as I stated at the start, the objectives at the end of this, coaches will be able to explain the tour's principles. So I hope we are able to do that at this stage. So sessions that are testing, uh, upscale, that are relate to the game, that um, always include all the players and uh, stimulate the, the, the players. We uh, covered the total playing performance model, so the three T's and the uh, three P's, uh, technical, tactical, team play, physical, psychological, and participant feedback. And then we showed nine activities and we detailed where the total playing performance model was um, uh, in operation and how it worked more in some activities than it did in others.